Welcome back to Minecraft, and today I think it's time that we do some, some exploring. You guys have armed yourselves, you've created some armor, so it'll be a little bit safer for you to head out. But there's one last thing we should do before we do that, and that's learn how to use a map and figure out where we are so we can get back to where we are. And in your treasure chest you'll notice that I've included a couple of things for this. I have a compass and eight pieces of paper. So I'm going to grab those out of the treasure chest. When the compass is equipped, you'll notice that the little red dial actually does move around. And what it's pointing towards, in this case, seems to be a little teleport block. Oops, let me drop it. Which is great, but what would actually be even more of a help to us would be a map. So what I'm going to do is craft a map. So I'm going to open my crafting table. You place the compass in the center and the paper all around. And now I have a map. When I equip the map on my belt, you'll notice that the map was created and the place where it was created is in the exact center. That happens for all the maps. If I make the map somewhere else, they'll have a, it'll have a different center. You notice that most of it is not uncovered yet. It's still like the brown, empty color of the map. But as I move around, the map will be uncovered. Now, I'm in a very super flat world, which is not very interesting, so there's not a whole lot of things to explore. Your world is much more interesting with many more things to see. So I've popped back into your world and I've opened up a map and you can see we can learn a lot from the map itself. We can tell where the land and the water are. We can tell what kind of biomes are present. So in the middle of this map there's a big arctic section with snow and ice and right to the east of that we have a big desert. The rest of the map is mostly green which means it's either forest or jungle um, or mountains uh, around that. So there's a lot you can learn just from the map itself. The next step is to really explore and open up the map and reveal everything that is around you. But before we do that, we have a couple of things we have to do to make sure we know how to get back to where we started. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press the F3 key at the top of the keyboard. And that's going to show me a bunch of data which at first looks kind of like nonsense. And there are a few pieces of this that we have to look at. The most important are the X, Y, and Z coordinates. This is a very powerful tool to figure out where we are and where we want to go. Right below that we have the F number and the F number tells me which direction I'm facing. So right now it has an F value of 1. That means I'm facing to the west. If, I'm, if I see number 2, that means I'm facing north. 3 is east and 0 is south. Now let's stop for just a second and talk a little bit about geography and the way that maps usually work. Almost always when I have a map, whether I'm in Minecraft or the real world, if the top of the map, sort of pointing upward, so to speak, is north. The right side of the map is east, which makes the bottom of the map south and the left part of the map west. So right now I said that I'm facing west, because I can see the F of value of 1, and I can confirm that because my little pointer on the map is actually facing west. If you're playing multiplayer and you see several different little pointers indicating several different people, that's fine. The best way to figure out which one is you is just to sort of move around and see which one of the little dots moves in the direction that uh, it should move. Another obvious way to, to get your bearings in Minecraft is to use the sun. Now, the sun will always rise from the east and set in the west. That's how it works in the real world, too and actually there are no clouds at the moment but if there were clouds they would be following the same direction as the sun so if you ever get turned around and you don't have a map available that's a quick way to figure out which way is which so I could see that the sun is sort of moving from my front to my back so if I'm correct I am now facing east let me pull up a map to see if it's true I am indeed facing east which means directly behind me the way the sun is traveling is the west so before you go exploring, you should do a couple of things. First of all, you should open the map, and you'll notice that you're probably right in the middle of the map. So as you venture out, you should be able to find your way back 
based simply on the fact that you can head back towards the middle of the map. You should also press F3 and make a note of your coordinates, especially the X and the Z coordinates, because those will lead you straight back to where you are in your little area. I'm going to return to our conversation about the X, Y, and Z coordinates. I'm going to press F3 one more time. And you see right now I'm currently standing at the X of negative 528, the Y of 78, and a Z of 1471. Those are my coordinates. And if I told anybody else those coordinates, if they know what they're doing, they can find me. And if you tell me your coordinates, if I know what I'm doing, I can find you. So let's talk about how that actually works. The most important coordinates are the X and the Z coordinates. Those are going to correspond to what we call latitude and longitude. So I'm going to switch to the internet real quick. And you've probably discussed this in some class or other, maybe social studies, but the map is always divided along lines of latitude and longitude. The lines that go horizontal across the map are latitude lines, and the lines that go vertical down the map are longitude lines. And if you have the right coordinates for any place on Earth, you could find them based on latitude and longitude. Now, what you have to remember is there are a lot more lines, uh, but you can't see them all on the map. If we pop back into Minecraft, we'll notice that as I move, the numbers are changing. Actually, the X and the Z are changing because I'm moving up and down, left and right. Currently, the Y value isn't changing, but I'll show you how I can make it change. If I sink down or rise up, the Y value changes because the Y value is how high above sea level you are. And the default value for when you start Minecraft right at sea level is 64. So here I'm almost at sea level. If I pop up one, there I am at 64. This is like the default Y coordinate for Minecraft. So let's talk about how to actually use these coordinates to find things. So what I'm going to do right now is using my map, I'm going to make sure that I'm facing just about straight due west. And I'm going to move forward and backward. Actually, I'm going to get up in the air to make my demonstration a little bit easier to follow. So I don't have to worry about the, the terrain. So I'm facing pretty much due west and I'm going to move backwards. And you're going to notice that the X coordinate is changing pretty rapidly. The Z coordinate is moving a little bit because I'm not facing exactly west. It's really hard to find exactly west, but it's not moving. That's not moving very quickly at all. But the Z, the X coordinate is moving very quickly. This means that the X coordinate determines my east to west direction. When I head to the west, so right now if I move forward and head to the west, my X coordinate gets smaller. So my numbers are getting more and more negative. If I head to the east, I'm, yes, to the east, my x coordinate gets larger. That means that if I go north and south, I'm talking about the z coordinate. So if I move backwards and go south, my z coordinate gets larger. If I move forward and go north, my z coordinate gets smaller. So basically, if I give you a set of coordinates, you have to decide which As you begin to explore, be mindful of the fact that if you die while you are out exploring, you quite possibly will lose everything inside your belt. So anything that you don't need to take with you while you explore, I would put back in the treasure chest. If you do happen to die, you can get back to where you did die, and unless someone else has picked the things up, the items that you drop will still be there. But to be safe, put things you don't need back inside the treasure chest. Make sure you're aware of the coordinates of home so you can easily find your way back. Here we are back at our survival guide, and I'm going to explain to you how you add the map section to your survival guide. Of course, I used heading number one for the map, but I actually added a heading number two. So I switched to heading two to write my location. This is a, what's called a subheading. It's not quite as important as the major heading, but it is still important. The first thing I've done is I've recorded the X, Y, and Z coordinates for where my home base is. Then I have print screened 
a picture of the map and this map is fully revealed and you'll notice that I placed a star or I meant to place a star where my home base is it should probably be right around the middle of the map if you made the map in your home base in order to insert a star it's just like inserting an arrow I go to insert and I choose shapes and I choose the star so that I could draw the star on the map. Once I have the star drawn, it gives me some options, and I use the shape fill to change the shape of the star, I'm sorry, the color of the star, to make it easier to see. I think that yellow is probably the easiest color to see, but you can use your own discretion about which color you use. So I have my coordinates and my map, and then I have a second heading number two here called important landmarks and I have gone through and found three important landmarks that are close to my home base and still on my map so what I've done is recorded the coordinates for each place and I've taken two screenshots one of the map when I'm there and one of me actually looking at the scene and I've also given each place a name based on what, I, what it reminded me of I call this one Cow Island because it's a little island and it's full of cows I really thought this little skylight was cool. It's a hole built in that mountain. And I have what I call the natural bridge, a bridge that was sort of made naturally. Each time I have two pictures. In order to get these pictures to move where I want them to move, I've done a little trick. And I've double clicked on the pictures and I've selected text wrapping. Text wrapping def defines how the picture interacts with the text around it. And what I've done is I've chosen the through option for these pictures. And when I do that, it allows me to move the picture pretty much anywhere I wanted, wanted, want to, um, to have it. It makes things a lot easier. So change the picture to through on text wrapping. Make sure you crop it so that you only see what you want to see. For this, in this case, just the map. And in this case, just the screen and find three landmarks on your map that you think are interesting or important in some way and add them to the landmark section of your overall map section. I want to point one more thing out about maps before I go and that's if, that is if you wander off the side of the map either in any direction if I just keep walking 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 towards the east eventually I will pop off the map and it will be a lot harder for me to figure out which direction I need to head to get back home. So make sure you don't go too far abroad or else you might get lost um, and it might be a little bit harder to find yourself. So happy exploring, be safe, and I can't wait to see what you come up with.